Okay, so these are the notes that you're going to take whenever you first pull your periodic table out of your star booklet. So whenever you get it, I want you to first start by putting eight men on your periodic table. And you need to remember that A stands for atomic number, P stands for protons, E stands for electrons. And what this tells us is that the atomic number is equal to the protons and equal to the electrons, meaning they're the same number. So if you know one, you know all of them. The second part is man, which is mass, atomic number, and neutrons. So I have the mass minus the atomic number equals the number of neutrons. Okay, we also need to remember that protons plus neutrons equal the mass. We also need to remember our charges of each one of our subatomic particles. So our protons have a positive charge, our electrons have a negative charge, and our neutrons have a neutral charge, as in no charge. We also need to remember the structure of an atom. Okay, so first we have our protons. They go in the center. And we also have neutrons. And then we have the, oops, the electrons going around the outside. And they have a negative charge. Okay, so there's our basic structure of an atom. Okay, moving on. Next, we need to distinguish between periods and groups. So first, we're gonna talk about periods. So we're going to go over here to the left, and we need to remember that all of these over here, these seven, are our periods. And periods go from left to right. Okay, there are rows. And what they also tell us is our energy levels. So for example, in the first row, they only have one energy level. For example, like helium. Helium only has one energy level going around it. If we come over here to, let's say, sulfur, sulfur has three because it's in the third row in the third period, which is pretty basic. Um, then we have our groups, and our groups have to do with reactivity, and our groups are our columns, and we have 18 total, okay, and they tell us the reactivity, okay. Now, the groups that I want you to space, uh, pay special attention to are these ones that have the one A's on them, or one, two, and then 13 through 18. And you can see the A's. And these are where we're gonna focus with our valence electrons. And what one A through eight A tell us are the valence electrons, the electrons that are in the outermost energy level in each atom. So, for example, if we come over here, for example, beryllium is in two, group two or two A. So it has two valence electrons. If we come over here to chlorine, chlorine is in group 17 or seven A. So it has seven valence electrons, meaning it has seven electrons on its outermost shell. Pretty straightforward. The next thing I want you to focus on are three main groups that might come up. The first one is group one, which is our most reactive metals. The second is group 17, which is our most reactive nonmetals. And the third is group 18, which is our least reactive group. Okay, let's zoom in, let's see. 
So let's locate these on the periodic table. So the first one is group one, our most reactive metals. Okay, these are our alkali metals and they're located right here. So we're gonna go ahead and put in there the alkali metals. The second group I want you to locate is group 17, which is right here. And these are our halogens. Okay. And the reason why they're so reactive is because they have seven valence electrons and they want one more. And then our third one that we're identifying is our noble gases. And they're over here in group 18. So we're going to write noble gases. Okay. Okay, so the final thing that we need to do is distinguish between metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Now, the way that we do this is we by using the stair step line. And our stair step line is what separates our metals and nonmetals. It also tells us where our metalloids are. And these metalloids have properties of both metals and nonmetals. So the first one, to the right of the stair step line, we have our nonmetals. So I'm going to write nonmetals. Okay? And we can tell they're nonmetals if you forget, for example, like oxygen, we know for a fact is a nonmetal, it's a gas. Okay, to the left of our stair step line, we have our metals. And you can always tell this is where our metals are for one, we have our alkali metals. But two, we have things like silver and gold that kind of give us an idea of that this side, that the left side is the metal side. Okay, so here you have all the notes that I think you should be making on your star test whenever you first get your periodic table. Hopefully it helps you answer all those questions that you might have on the periodic table. Good luck.